Matitei Delgado, acolo este o batit corner, dragi ascultători. De... Drop your plates of meat right up on the seat. <laughs> this is the Self-Preservation Society. Hello, I'm Dr. Casey. Welcome back to Valverde Broadcasting. I am joined by Professor <laughs> Extraordinaire Toby Venables. Thank you. Um, which is, and it's very nice to, to be here with you. Very nice to actually get a chance uh, yeah, to, to do to, this thing. Yeah, well, how it will go, we just don't we know. Just it might don't be know. absolute rubbish. We can just turn <laughs> off now. Like a really badly planned heist. <laughs> it may not go well. We, this, is, this was a sort of last minute uh, idea, suggestion to talk about the Italian job. Um, but I think it's a good The old over and under routine. That's it, yeah. That's it. Plenty of room for Michael Cole. <laughs> um, and... Uh, but a great, great idea because it's not one that we've sort of really thought about. But it's, um, yeah, 1969, is that right? It could be. Well, yes. Google that. Yes. There you go. Google 69. that. Someone out there. Google 69. That. Very much in the heart of the kind of swinging 60s kind of absolutely film craze, I think. Uh, the kind of, is this the sort of, I, I, it can't be, I'm sure, but is it, <laughs> is it the first sort of mainstream example of a, the kind of noble thief, fun, laughy, you know, like, does that make sense? Because the heist movie kind of went on from there to become something it kind of metastasized until we got, ironically, the remake mm. of it. In a way. Yeah. In uh, my opinion. I think, I mean, it was part of... Um, one thing I do know... <laughs> sort of politicians kind of answer. Uh, one thing I do know is that... Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is that? It's like I don't know. poking someone with an invisible with pencil. With a Viking sword. Yeah, okay. <laughs> one hand. No, it's not here. Right. Um, uh, the, the, there was a sort of bit of a tradition of um, sort of gangsters and criminals right. in British films as being sort of figures of fun, right? As being sort of jokey characters, and I only know that because uh, when um, Michael Caine went on to make Get Carter, the whole thinking behind Get Carter was let's show gangsters the way they really are, right? And um, uh, which is pretty grim, and there's not many laughs in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Occasionally, but I think that Michael Caine doesn't doesn't smile at all until the very end, about which I won't say anything. Right. So there was that sort of tradition of like the the, the sort of jokey, you know, jolly British yeah. criminal, and it's all a bit. And I suppose it's a bit Robin Hood, isn't it? It's a bit kind mm. of, you know. Um, Artful Dodger and all of that sort of stuff. It starts off, I mean, of it. I would think when we're introduced to um, Croker. Croker? Yeah. Yeah. His his kind of um, Charlie, Charlie Croker. His, <laughs> his um, sorry, I won't do that all the time. No, uh, no, do it, do it. His, he's kind of got an Alfie quality to him because obviously he's, he's introduced as yeah. a sort of Lothario with women around him and stuff like that. And it's kind of, you know, and he's almost like he's batting them off all the time. Like he's, they turn up in his bedroom, don't they? Because he gets out <laughs> yeah, of prison. Do, yeah. And he comes home to just a bevy of women. They're coming out present, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, right. Like to 25 women or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, he has a giant orgy, then robs a bunch of like Italian, I guess because he's robbing, he's, he's, they're robbing the mafia, right? Is that the, oh no, they're not. No, no they're it's, not. The, the, whole, the whole kind of subtext is basically, British cars are fantastic and foreign cars are shit. <laughs> yeah. That's basically the subtext because yeah. it's like it's like there's Mini Coopers, there's Aston Martins, there's Land Rovers. The I forget what the bus is. There are probably some bus enthusiasts out there who can tell me. All, oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> British Leylands. Uh, spooky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but, it, but they're all British mm. British vehicles at a time when such a thing <laughs> actually existed. And, <laughs> yes. uh, and they're robbing uh, a, da a down payment on a car plant, which is, is from the Fiat right. car company. So it's $4 million yeah. um, uh, that is destined to, for uh, the making of uh, Italian cars. And, ba and, and obviously the whole of the rest of the film basically is, is uh, you know, Mini Coopers leaping over gaps whilst Fiat's kind of conk out and you know but smoke comes out of them and stuff like that mm, mm, mm. so there is a whole kind of like british cars yeah. foreign cars crap you know, <laughs> just like basically that basically. yeah i mean a lot of the the imagery certainly the poster imagery and so i know in later years like on vhs and dvd it's always like michael kane and the, the, there's always the union jack in there yeah. and obviously the minis are all red white and blue um, yeah, yeah. And, and all that kind of thing so there's there is very much a kind of 
I suppose, patriotism to it. Yeah, um, and there's the backdrop of the football match so it, as well. Yeah, so there's kind of like, there are like Union Jacks all over the place. Mm. And um, so it's, it's, it's really, it's a fascinating thing to look at, to look, to look, look back at. Uh, You've got obviously as well the kind of attitude to, is it a, I suppose it is a very male or like from the POV of Matt, because the women in it, obviously you've literally got Benny Hill running around after yeah. big girls, as he yeah. calls them, um, <laughs> and, uh, and stuff like that. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of an example of a sort of, you know, central female character in it, but there, there, isn't there? there is Annette, yeah. but no, she's only in it for two seconds. So just, yeah. she is a strong, she's a strong female character, but uh, uh, she's on the screen for like a second and a half. Mm. So... Uh, <laughs> And there's there's Michael Caine's Charlie Croker's girlfriend who is just kind of told to sort of stay out of the way, really. I think. Yeah. Really, just sort of look after things until we get back, kind of stuff. Right. You know, you stay in reserve with the fast cars or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which I've Lorna, got... Lorna, Lorna. That's it. Right, right. I knew I'd get there in the end. <laughs> but not not really not really sort of replete with female characters of any kind. Hmm. Hmm. Um. No coward, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who's Just. broken into my toilet. <laughs> like that guy. Um, what's his name? I can't remember the character's name now. Um, uh, Mr. Bridger. Mr. Bridger. Mr. Bridger. And again, that, that sort of class thing, mm. where they introduced that class thing, where, um, yeah, Charlie's kind of comes comes with this plan and he's just like dismissed out of hand because obviously he's an idiot and mm. um, it will fail and it's a, it's a waste of time. Um, but also there is very much that, which I don't know how much of that is to do with it just being Noel Coward. <laughs> but the, the character of Mr. Bridger is quite an odd. Yeah. It's not your typical like gang boss, yeah. you know, London gang boss at all, which is what makes it so interesting and, mm. and sort of fun. And that he basically, you know, he clearly runs everything. But it's like he's got that sense of entitlement, and there is a there is a sense in which we kind of feel like, well, yeah, he is. He's quite posh, and he speaks really nicely. So maybe people should just do what he says. Yeah. Which we are. It's a situation we we are still stuck in, actually. But anyway, <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> it's uh, the deference, I suppose, of all the characters around him. Like you, there's there's just that understood thing that you don't mess with Mr. Bridger. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. It's interesting to see because obviously that the, in in hindsight, you know how the kind of heist movie ended up, and the it, juxtaposing it with Hollywood's heist sort of thing. It's it's always been, I suppose, heist movies and more broadly gangster films in Hollywood were more obviously against the backdrop of the American dream, the kind of rising up, you know, rags to riches stuff. Whereas here, it's kind of less, I guess. I mean, obviously, capitalism plays a role in it, but it's not, you know, the, I don't think at any point we're under any illusion that this is a noble thing to do necessarily. I mean, perhaps there's a sort of like blokey, blokey, we, we go kind of like you're on their side, but I don't think at any point you're kind of, and it, 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 you know, it literally famously, spoilers for an ancient film, it ends with a 40, 50, 50 year old film, it ends <laughs> with them hanging over a you know, t literally teetering on the edge. And it's like, I suppose, are yeah. we supposed to feel like, do we want them to die or do we want them to survive? And it's kind of like, it's as to be left in that position as an audience, it's kind of like, are they the good guys? It oh, is, it is you know? one of the most outrageous endings of any film ever. Yeah. For something that is so conventional, <laughs> to then just like Lee and and I, I I've been with someone who was watching it for the first time, and they were absolutely. I wasn't actually wasn't prepared for the severity of their response to that ending. And they're like, like literally, like <laughs> what? No, you know, like, like <laughs> shouting at the at the TV. Yeah. And it's just and the and the, the helicopters just drawing away, and the music's coming in, and you you realise this actually is it. This yeah. is oh, you know, no, just. Make up your own mind, because uh, you know we're not we're not going to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Which is quite a radical thing. But I, I, going back to that sort of the sort of jokiness, seriousness thing, uh, when they, when you actually see the heist, when the heist actually takes place, and they get they get the van, they get into the van. That is quite brutal. And I remember mm. the last time I watched it, mm. it was really kind of you know it's all quite jokey, and no one is really getting hurt. And then and then they're they're smacking these guys over the head with pickaxe handles. You know, these jokey Cockney characters like, Ooh. and uh, you think, oh, that's, mm. quite, that's quite nasty actually. Mm. So yeah, it does introduce a note of, uh, 
is this a good thing? I suppose that's the thing. Once you show them having to have an interaction with their with, with their um, prey, if you like, with the people they're robbing, there's got to be an element of criminality. They can't be like, oh, yeah. mate, you, you go rip you do up the stairs. It's not <laughs> something to be like that, is know. it? <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to be. It's they, I guess at some point you have to show the reality of. Well, well be... I mean, you don't. I mean, they, you don't have to. <laughs> I mean, what was interesting to me was like that they may obviously made the decision like when they go in to actually get the stuff. Let, let's just go for it. Let's not kind of like show them because they could be like quite nice, just threatening towards these guys. But no, just like clobber them mm. <laughs> repeatedly over the head with uh, pick handles, and uh, it's and it happens really fast as well. Yeah. But then it's sort of straight into the chase, so you don't, you don't really have time to think about it. And then it's back to ding 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 ding, ding yeah, you know, yeah, and all yeah. that all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the I suppose there's the element of it as well as the the, the team assembly element so that's I guess would that be still part of the first act well, I suppose it is there's kind of I suppose yeah. the first act is assembling the team the second act is kind of traveling there and then the third act is the chase I guess yeah so that, yeah, yeah 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 so um yeah that kind of team assembly thing obviously you had certain, that to do with a lot of war films you had like Guns and Averone and all that kind of stuff where yeah. it was the, the get the team together to do the mission thing so this I suppose in as a peacetime thing where you're getting a bunch of people together to go and steal stuff is I don't know if there's any echoes of that in there. Do you think of sort of the? Yeah. Well, it, interestingly, because it's written by Troy Kennedy Martin, right? Who also um, wrote? Uh, oh God, what's it called? Kelly's Heroes. Mm, okay. Yeah. Which, um, in, in a way, seems uh, a million miles away. But actually, when you start to think about it, you think, hang on, it's a bunch of people in special vehicles, going to get a load of gold, basically in enemy territory. Mm. <laughs> it's like, basically they're the same film. Yeah. Um, it's just one of them happens to be happening in, in the Second World War and have Clint Eastwood in it and a bunch of Americans. And um, <laughs> But essentially, it's like vehicles, gold, enemy territory, in we go, in, out, get the gold. Um, and <laughs> it, it wasn't until quite recently that it struck me quite how similar the, the kind of dynamic yeah. is. But I think, to be honest, a lot of it isn't, it isn't really about gold or money or anything. It's just about sticking two fingers up at... Is it? I suppose one thing you could read into it is that there's a, there's a sort of the devil makes work for idle hands thing in that you've got a bunch of people who sat around post-World War II who are demolition experts, whatever, you know, safe crackers, all these, these skills <laughs> that people have got that are then like, you know, what do you do after... The, in, I don't know. I don't think that's me overthinking it probably. But, <laughs> but there's a certain element that, you know, because obviously he does it, he has to get the expert in that who's... One guy is in it. Where's Benny Hill? He's, he's not in a... He's not in a mental institute, is he? He's in, he, a, he's, he's in a home. In a home. He is in a home. For randy old buggers or whatever. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> a bit, it's, it's a bit unclear <laughs> what, exactly what kind of home it is, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah they managed to managed to release him from it without, yeah. without too much trouble, it seems. <laughs> yeah. What I love is the fact that he is, he's the computer expert. When they sneak in to replace the replace the, these whacking great spools of tape <laughs> like this big which yeah. which have already been provided so he didn't need to do anything with that and then he's he's going to put them on and he gets out he, he gets out a screwdriver uh, and it's like and then he realizes no and he it just pulls off <laughs> and actually that's all he does yeah. <laughs> it's all he does he's like pull, he, he pulls a spool off a spindle yeah and then puts puts another one back on and i thought was he really necessary? Yeah. All that expertise. <laughs> I suppose it's a comment on the kind of techno, you know, the 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 not luddite, but kind of um, technophobia of a certain generation that don't, you know, that actually there's not much to it. it maybe I don't know. Again, too much reading. Really. I think they, they just wanted <laughs> Professor Peach <laughs> in it. It's a joke. Don't we wanted <laughs> Professor Peach and Benny Hill in it. Really. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, I thought it's extraordinary to me, like that. There's there's Michael Caine, Noel Coward. Benny Hill <laughs> together in one f it's just it's just an extraordinary like Noel Coward Benny Hill that That's that alone bizarre. is kind of uh, but the, I think the director knew knew Noel Coward Noel Coward had been a kind of mentor okay. um, to him and uh, had sort of helped ad advance his career because it, you know it was just just was being I think it may even be his godfather uh, I may have made that up okay Okay. Do, is this? Do you think this is kind of a? 
it's almost like a kind of proto Avengers end of an era, <laughs> in a weird way, like in a kind of team up end of a. Is it an end of an era thing? Because like that that those sort of people never really came back. It's not like it feels like at the end of the sixties. Yeah, really go into kind of it. it, it yeah, I don't know how much, it's very hard to say how much of that is sort of retrospective, Yeah. kind of whether it's conscious that it's end of an era. I guess at the time it wouldn't have been, but I mean it's, what, what, how was it received? I mean, I'm assuming it was a hit at the time, was it? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I mean, it's a peak Michael Caine, I guess, in terms of... Yeah, I mean, and, and just the cast, I mean, that cast is going to guarantee an audience, because also like John LeMessurier um, mm -hmm. from Dad's Army. Um, being in there, being the, the very kind of gently spoken, uh, rather posh uh, <laughs> prison governor, mm. to whom to whom Mr. Bridger says, "My toilet was broken into," and uh, yeah. and all of that broken into, <laughs> broken into my toilet. So there are loads of, and it's just like, yeah. and Benny Hill was like the biggest TV star, and Michael Caine was arguably arguably Britain's biggest film star. Mm. So it's kind of got, it's got all these things coming together in an extraordinary mm. and quite unexpected way. It's, it's peak, I mean, cause <coughs> it's, it's, it's Beatles mania, it's Bond, it's all, I mean, that British, that huge British push in the sixties. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wouldn't know, but I don't, I don't know kind of when that ended. When did the Beatles break up? I don't even know when they broke up. <laughs> it's all the same. Uh, 71? Right. Okay. So it's kind of, I mean, you that know, you're, right. you're going into that era of 69 was, Majesty's Secret Service, so that's at the end of the Sean Connery thing. Um, you've kind of, I do think, I just, you know, it does feel to me like a kind of cumulative, in hindsight, 100%, mm. but then going into the, the 70s became a lot more cynical because of New York cinema and, yeah, you know, yeah, kind yeah. Of French connection stuff. So it's kind of, it does feel like a, not last hurrah, because obviously we went on to do much more stuff like yeah, that. You've yeah. got Ocean's Eleven and all those kinds of things, but it, it's, it does feel kind of, for a long time, it felt like a kind of island in a way. Like, I don't know of, any other films like it? I'm sure they probably were, but I mean, in, in terms of the, the fullness of time, like I don't really... That sort really... of 60s Carnaby Street, mm. you know, kind of Britain being at the centre of everything, yeah. really. It's kind of, it is kind of the end, end of end of that, definitely. And the kind of British humour in it, like what does he say at one point, he killed a load of tigers, or yes, I used to machine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and of course there is, you know, Aston Martins are, are in it, and it's like mm. Aston Martins have by this stage, not that they weren't iconic before, but through Bond they become, you know, it's like they, they take on a kind of status like the Spitfire or something. Yeah, where... well the DB5, especially. I'm not sure if it's a DB5 years or a DB6. They're both visually not massively distinct. It's a convertible. Right. The one that, and, and actually, the, the emotional, the most emotional moment in the whole film is when an Aston Martin gets destroyed by, by a digger, by mm. some, Italians, yeah, you know, yeah. Italian mafia just sort of like crushing the car, and that's it's like that's the worst thing that you can do is well, like destroy a. They did it in Skyfall as well. Aston Martin. <laughs> the, the, the ultimate way to piss off a Brit is to destroy their Aston Martin. I mean, it's a silly, but like it's. it's kind I'd of, be quite fed up, I must admit. But, yeah, uh, I would be. Well, especially now because they're worth, but it's countless millions. But like, it, it, but the people are like, well, you know, they come, they go, but car, you know, Aston Martin, come on, yeah, yeah, that's, this, that's serious. Even it's funny own. how it's so focused on the hardware, but I kind of love that. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose in a way it's a reaction to the kind of Bond thing, because Bond was yeah, had become at that point especially about his kind of accoutrement, and, and, and that was very much how he was written by Fleming, was that he was sort of, uh, his character was, it, well, we were informed of his character by his choice of clothing and, you know, car and all that kind of thing. I mean, he, had a, he had an old Bentley in the books, but, you know, it's that kind of thing. And um, this is a kind of, Example of that as well, and that you know, we've got to pick the best jobs, the best tools for the job, you know, and it's got minis, you know, and that sort of thing. It's kind of, um, I suppose there's that element to it, that and, and then consumerism was right at its peak, I guess, there yeah, as well, right? yeah. So, like you say, Carnaby Street, full of fashion, full of you know, fashion's a very important part to this film as well. Um, you know, once people are out of jail, they go and they all look very just kind of distinct, I mean. yeah. And and Charlie Croker, as you know, he, he comes out looking like a bit of a scruff and uh, each visit that he makes to each person like his tailor and stuff like that he sort of gets smarter and smarter and smarter and his status go goes up till by the end when he's reclaiming his Aston Martin 
he's in this absolutely fantastic suit mm. and looking absolutely the business and uh, and is is addressed as Lord Croker. Oh, right. And is speaking this, you know, that's when he has yeah. the, the crack about like um, shooting tigers. <laughs> and, it, but it's, it's like, he's really, it's almost like th that's what you can do. That's what you can, you can be in Britain at this time. Right. If you break the rules a bit. Mm. Um, it's a jab at class as well, that, because it's kind of. Yeah. The, uh, Definitely. Obviously, he, we're not making light of shooting tigers with machine guns, but his, the point is, is that <laughs> he's saying that that's, it's believable to the character in the scene that someone of that status would say a thing like that. Or, you know, or kind of is, I mean, it's one of those buttons on a scene that because we cut away so quickly, it's like, if you saw what happened after that, it'd probably be like, well, hang on, you shot a tiger with a machine. No. I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think he would have questioned it. Because no. like, sort of like, <laughs> yeah. he's like, it's not his place. He can't, That's right. he kind of can't question that. Yeah. So it's like when you're in that, in, in that position of authority, you can say, what, say and do what the hell you like. Mm, and mm, mm. No one's really going to. Question it, which is why it's so interesting that, that Bridges sort of of that class, right? Yeah. Completely unlike you know that sort of gang boss stereotype, but um, it's kind of a nouvelle reach, I think, as well. Because cool, obviously people were, um, that, you know, a lot was said about the sixties about people's buying power and consumerism, and like I guess being able to the social mobility, mm. I guess, changed then as well. I don't know. I mean, obviously not being a child of. Uh, well, not even been around then, but it, uh, it seems in how it's been kind of told to me is that that's that was, there was a lot of that going on then, and I guess it's part of the swingy sixties. You could be who you wanted to be, and there wasn't the structures weren't really there to stop you. I don't know. But. I think uh, the other the other thing that, that everyone remembers about the film is the music, mm. because that tune just kind of like mm -hmm. it just it just goes round and round in your head, and that sort of uh, that kind of chorus of um, uh, Self-preservation society, those sort of like Cockney voices, and the fact that it, the fact that it is actually written by Quincy Jones, right. who I believe also wrote the lyrics because he became fascinated by Cockney rhyming slang. Really? Yes, that, I mean Quincy. This is that <laughs> Quincy Jones. So Quincy Jones, sort of Black American music legend, writing the music for this, this quintessentially British Cockney, so, as your father. Yeah. Uh, film and it's and it totally works. It totally yeah. works because he's coming, presumably because he's coming to it from the outside and yeah. is discovering all this weird and wonderful stuff and doing quite interesting things with it. And you know he's no no slouch in the music department. Well, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, and the other thing that uh, I found out was that uh, the stunt drivers for the Mini Coopers uh, were all French. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> They're all French. The, the only people they could find who could actually do that stuff mm. were all Frenchmen, for some reason. I don't know why that is I particularly. It's, well, but. it's probably a lot to do with I know the French were making, in terms of the cars they were making, were much more in line, because the Mini was our first uh, front engine, uh, sorry, front wheel drive vehicle, I think. I don't think we'd make, you know, they were all with uh, uh, transverse engines, transverse engines. I think. I don't know. I'm to think. Um, yeah. Um, so they uh, maybe the French had more experience, kind of in, in test driving those and, and knew how to handle front engine. I have no idea. Cars. But they were the, well, they were the ones. Them. They were the ones. Mm. And actually, what? <laughs> I mean, now it would all be measured out and calculated, and actually, it probably wouldn't do it at all anyway. But um, yeah. But um, yeah, there wasn't any measuring. There wasn't any kind of you know, calculation of, uh, beyond the person in the in the driving seat of the car looking at it and thinking, mm, can we make that? I think we can make that. Yeah. Well, let's try. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> C'est bon. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. And off they go. And we said, well, we'll see if it works. Must and, have sold a lot of minis. And it did. It yeah, I, th I think it probably did. The um, Let's touch briefly. Uh, we've got to five minutes left. Let's touch briefly on the remake. The, 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 the McDonald's muck. Italian job with, with I mean, it, it, very much the American interpretation of, or misinterpretation. Of yeah, well, okay, well, I have to confess, but I mean, this, this, I have avoided it. I have not seen it. Right. And I, I kind of, I actually want to see it. I've sort of, I'm like in the last few weeks, I've sort of come around to thinking, you know what? I think I could just watch this just as a, as a film and not worry about Italian jobness. Mm. Um, so I've, I actually, I actually avoided it because it was such a kind of, it felt like such a, a remake of such a precious thing in a way. 
Yeah. And for me, like a childhood film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's on yeah. on TV and you're, you're all watching it, and it's like you know, there's some quite brutal bits in, but you know, it's fun for all the family. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, and I just didn't want that. I just didn't. didn't I didn't want it. Solid. I didn't need it. And yeah. But I'm I'm open, more open. I've come around to it. I I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, no, you can. It's, <laughs> it's essentially it's a it's a it may as well be it's called the Italian Job because it's a heist movie about a guy who watches the Italian job and has an idea for a heist. <laughs> That's the only, I mean, all right, he drives an Aston Martin at one point, and it, and it, but, and it's got, is it got Jason Statham in it? I think it's got Jason Statham in it. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, oh, so, yeah. <laughs> the Italian job. Um, what is his accent now? Oh, who knows? It was, that was in his <laughs> where, period, I think, when he was trying to sort of be American, like the transporter and all that. Like, I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where it's going. I went to Hamburger. <laughs> that sort of, I don't know, it was weird. But, and then Mark Wahlberg's in it as well, looking bemused and confused as he tends to, you know. It's, what? No. So I do mother for me. Italian job. Um, so it actually so, is. So in this world of the Italian Job, the remake, the, the film, the Italian exists. Job does exist, and he's watching it at one point. And it's and it could be it could be one of those annoying fourth wall breaking things where you pass by a TV and it's just on, and it's kind of shot like that. Sorry, <laughs> shot like that. I whistled. Um, Where's the dog? <laughs> um, but he does. I think it's. I forget because it's been a long time since I've seen it. But he does say it, at one point there's a bit of dialogue about like, oh, it's like the Italian Job. And so they reference the film. So it's kind of like, uh, what are we saying? Okay. It's very bizarre. But as a, if it was just app and film, very much like your Richard's off camera, very much like the Robocop remake. If it was just <laughs> like heist job, the movie or something, <laughs> yeah, but they just happened to reference the Italian job in it, that would be fine. But it's the fact yeah. that it's called the Italian job and you kind of go, yeah, why? Like, I, to what end? I don't have a problem particularly with it, and the filmmaking and everything is typical kind of early naughty. So it's really the title that's the. Well, I mean, if you've got the Italian job, you know, definite article, the Italian job, that is the Italian job. Yeah. Uh, you do another one, that's not the Italian job, is it? That's another an Italian, Italian job. job. Yeah. Or an Italian job. <laughs> Which it's sounds not... like some sex thing. Yeah, it does. <laughs> hey, you ever heard of that? Anyway, or a, or a sort of. It out. <laughs> or something you do in your holidays. Yes, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I've got a job in Italy. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds it's, it's a bit familiar. Gap year we come, yeah, we're doing a job in Italy. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to Italy for a gap year. <laughs> Film credit. Uh, yeah, it's just it, that is it's. Uh, it gets it's it, it's derided as because of what it is because of I suppose because it's it's stealing the the moniker of the original and, and quite unnecessarily so I think it's it's just a, but again but it, it but it ends oh, I don't want to spoil it but it ends Go on, like everyone it. everyone wins at the end they get away you know there's no cliffhanger there's oh, no, really yeah yeah oh, so it's, I mean oh really <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's, oh, uh, it's mm, well I mean you can't you couldn't really repeat that I mean it'd be quite funny if he based a heist on. The Italian, the Italian job movie, and what happened to him was exactly what happened in the movie. That would be funny. Yeah, you need to like, oh, jump in with shit. both feet, I think, if you're going to do that. This is the problem with yeah. like replicating that original heist. Yeah, 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 it yeah. has actually ended in exactly the same way. Exactly. Right, well, on that note, it's time to wrap up. Uh, I hope you found that edifying. I hope you found that interesting. Um, thank you so much, Toby, for, thank you. for thank taking you. time to sit down. That was really, really cool. Taking uh, time to sit down. Go show me. S sit down with me, I mean. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Shorthand. Social media down there. Go, 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 go. Bye now. Support your seventh or eighth favourite YouTube channel by buying crap, tat, junk, hogwash and filth at redbubble.com slash people slash Valverde shop.